Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Exile. Sit back and enjoy the show. Exile, developed and published by Audiogenic, and first released on the Amiga in 1991. Three versions of Exile made it to the Amiga. There was the usual OCS version, which was released in 1991. At the moment we are actually checking out the AGA version which was released in 1995 and there is also a CD32 version also released in 1995. Ooh. Ooh. take control of Commander Mike Finn, who's landed in the spacecraft Perseus on the planet Phobos. And what we are actually investigating here is part of the crashed wreckage, and hopefully we can get our way towards the first of our weapons, which is a grenade, which we can store in our inventory, which we can hold many items. And now that we have a grenade, we are at least armed. Apparently, an evil engineer has taken over the planet known as Triax, and it is our job to defeat Tyrax. You saw him materialize and take away our Destinator in our ship right at the beginning of the game, and he will appear throughout the game to taunt us, and being an evil renegade genetic engineer, he has created a number of items scattered around that landscape, which will harm us and kill us, and it's our job to take those on and blow those away. You can see I have a grenade and that's useful for destroying this door. It is vital to open that and then that opens the rest of the level. robot is destroyed it will also leave a power supply behind and it's essential to collect all those power items once you've blown something up and in this game power is essential because it powers our jetpack and also our weapons as well but getting through this very first enemy is pretty difficult because you have to time that perfectly and on this AJ version this is pretty difficult to get right first time Ooh. That's the same annoying green bird that you saw in the introduction sequence flying out of that tree and out of all the animals that can be found in exile I found that annoying green bird to be the most memorable and you can see we are being attacked but luckily we gain our energy back simply by leaving alone for a second and letting that recharge and that means that we can destroy this enemy finally and we can get some more energy for our time and trouble. That's our first gun collected, that's a pistol that somebody's left lying around and we can use that to destroy some of the animals in the game and some soft targets. But that weedy pistol isn't enough to blow away many of the harder targets and for that you will need a grenade and some of the later weapons. Ooh. 
also these monkey imps that you can see and they really do annoy the player even more than the birds because they will grab items and steal items away and what we really need first of all is a particularly handy item the flask that is important because it will allow us to carry water but we'll also have to make use of the teleporter which we get built into our jetpack and by pressing a key or accessing that in the inventory we can make use of the teleporter to get this flask we can also throw items and it's important to throw the flask through that doorway because as soon as the flask gets anywhere near that door it will close and us along with it so all we have to do is to throw that flask through the door and if it doesn't fit we'll have to blast it through We can choose to save our progress at any point in using the teleporter. When we die, we'll teleport down to that last saved position. And so we can find somewhere that's safe. Then when we die, we'll simply teleport back to that safe place. And that means that we can recharge our energy. And our energy is taking a little bit of a battering at the moment because of all these angry birds. And yes, those things really should be dealt with before we try to tackle any of the puzzles. With the animals deceased, it's probably easier to get through this game and it means that we can juggle this water. And this game uses real world physics, or at least as close as that could get. And earth, air, fire and water elements will have to be used. And you can see the fire, all we'll have to do is to drop that water here and hopefully we can put out those flames. We can also angle our gun in 180 degrees, so we can shoot upwards and any degree, but unfortunately this bird is giving us a hard time, and if those birds spill the water, it means we'll have to do that job all over again. <laughs> Without any of the wildlife to stop us, all we have to do is to drop this item right here and then the switch by the side will open that gate and put out the fire. It isn't a hard puzzle and sometimes the puzzles in this game are hard, but it starts pretty easy as long as the player knows a certain amount of physics. If we save that current position whilst that door is closed, hopefully it triggers the switch to open the door and then teleport there. Hopefully that means that we can get to the item that we need. And in this case, it's a remote control device known as the RCD. This is one of the most important items in the entire game. So collecting the RCD quickly is probably the most important thing to do. We can also see some more fire and I would actually recommend to leave some fire available on that level because we will gain a match later on which requires lighting and if you get rid of all the fire it means unfortunately you cannot light the match. <laughs> This large remote control device helps us open all the doors which are initially locked or unable to move at the start of the game and some of those teleports as well. And so RCD devices can be useful but for the main part it's helpful to stick to that gun. Moving slightly upwards on the map from the pond which is a nice waypoint to remember. This opens up the alleyway to the second section of the game and you may be surprised to know that there is a massive huge map on offer and there are at least three huge areas to explore of which we'll only be exploring maybe 20% in this playthrough. Ooh. Those 
pesky birds have forced a grenade out of our pocket, and if we rush in too quickly like this, you can see our energy is slowly recovering, but not enough. And if we forget to save our last position, well, we'll find ourselves all the way back at the start of the game. And we can see this is the entrance to the cave section to the west, and this is a huge place, and I think you need two radioactive crystals, maybe even three on that thing, to blow it open. We have discovered our first key, and that is known as a pass for the RCD. That's basically a key to open the doors marked with a number 2. You can see the second key of the 6 that we can pick up in this game is now active, so all we need to do to open those doors is to pull out our RCD and to fire that towards the door. Unfortunately, those birds forced the RCD out of our fingers, so using our Remember All teleport device, we can skip back a few places and we can pick up that grenade and hopefully the RCD. We cannot at this stage pick up that radioactive rock, and I think we gain the ability to do that later on, but we can also use the little robots that you may have seen hanging around. We can use two whistles to activate different robots, and they will pick up those things for us. It's always best to hang back and save energy, particularly when we don't have a gun to destroy this guy and we don't really want to waste a grenade on the job. But if we can lure robots off the edge, then they should blow up and it's possible to throw and basically fire robots off the edge. But you can see we found yet another type of robot in this environment and we have found one item blocking our way. That's a huge table or a desk as I like to call it. To get rid of this robot, I'm actually going to use a robot to destroy the other robot, and it's not particularly easy to do that, but like so many open world adventures, we can take on and tackle these puzzles in any number of ways, and it's surprising that we can achieve the same aim through different means. This game covers three of Newton's laws of motion, including gravity, which will drag us down of course, and we also have mass and inertia, and even explosive power from things blowing up and bobbing around on water and that kind of thing. So every element is present in the game, and if we can generate enough force, that will generate an equal and opposite force to blow that thing in the opposite direction. Some more energy capsules would be great if I didn't have a desk on my head. In the background you may be able to hear something that sounds a bit like the Jaws theme, basically something driving away in the background and that will get louder and more in danger as you face more danger and so that's a rolling soundtrack which changes according to the circumstances in the game. There are also various sound effects and when we collide with anything we've got in the usual way and of course different weapons make different noises and all the bullets and everything else makes full use of physics 
So let's try to brave the environment again and pick up our RCD and we will need that a little bit later on. And we can also find another free grenade. The fastest way to get around this level is to use the teleports and we have teleported a friendly robot towards us and we'll have to use a whistle to activate that thing and we don't have any whistles at the moment. There are two whistles to collect in the game as well as the six keys and just like the game Mercenary, if we find those it will make life slightly easier. I have actually no idea how to get around this particular puzzle and you can even use the desk to squeeze your way into that gap if you really wanted to and force that thing like a wedge and I really do like the alternative ways that things can be done but I'm not quite sure what I have to do in this case maybe that giant switch on the roof has something to do with it and you can see, well, periodically we can force that guy further away and using the speeded up footage, I'll just ram that spot and that means we can squeeze through that gap. But we find it blocked by a huge stone and the robot kills us, which leaves us back to where we were before. Start of the game, many of the items can be simply picked up and a jetpack booster will simply help us fly around just that little bit quicker and that means if we collide with something we'll take more damage. But that is crucial and we'll face wind tunnels and things later on. second half of this review, let's take a look at the OCS version released in 1991 on the Amiga and you will be able to see that this is very similar to the original 8-bit platforms which this game was originally developed upon. This is a journey through space. The original Amiga version of Exile opens with a great title theme which was slightly remixed for the CD32 release and that is very 90s and it is very welcome in a game like this. OCS version is the one that I had back in the day and is the one that I have the fondest memories of and I spent quite a few hours trying to explore this game. I originally discovered it on the Commodore 64 thanks to a cover tape demo and then I got the full game and then I also got the Amiga original box. So let's press fire and check this version out. Once again we find ourselves on Phobos aboard the Perseus and unfortunately the evil doctor once again has stolen the thing that helps us to get off that planet and you will find the layout is identical throughout all the versions of Exile including the three that was released on the Amiga. Exile plays identically on almost all of the conversions including the BBC, the Commodore 64 and on the Amiga. So if you've completed one or if you know how to do one then you should be at home playing the others.
On the left, we can see the four guns that we can pick up, of which we have zero at the moment. And JP is our jetpack power, and SU is our suit power. Yes, we can even divert its power to the suit later on to collect those radioactive crystals. In the left centre, we can see our current score, which will go up when we collect anything, and go down by one point for every second that we remain alive in the game. So I have to continue collecting things, and see my score has just gone up when I collect the pistol. Our current time is also registered to the right. We have 8 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock that we have been playing this game at the moment. To the far right we can see our keys and the H is representing our current health and when the H goes into the red that means we are on our way out. And luckily in this game we'll simply return to the last save position where we saved our position using the quick key and there are a huge number of keys to memorise in this game and memorising the game just like mercenary again is really handy and if you can you can always press the space bar and trigger everything that we can accomplish by pressing the space bar and the quick icons but I only tend to use the quick icons if I can't remember the key presses and look at this we found a teleport and that takes us actually to the cold wheel of the game apparently we can find the code on the disc or the manual to sort this code out and we're supposed to find that out but unfortunately this is a crack so luckily we can type any code and it will still work Exile was designed by Jeremy C. Smith and Peter Irvine and Jeremy C. Smith became famous on the Commodore 64 for designing and coding Thrust which used real world physics of course to fly around in space and you can see the Thrust heritage sometimes playing this game and Peter Irvine was also famous on the 8-bit systems for creating Starship Command for the Acorn Electron in 1983. So the 83 game and the 1986 Thrust coders got together and they created this game in 1988 and for 1988 this is certainly amazing compared to the 1986 thrust and they really did try to push the limits with a huge map which will take maybe three hours to get around and solve all those puzzles Braving a beehive, we've just collected the third key, which is highlighted by the number on the non-AGA version. And even though this has simpler graphics, I think you will agree it's still a very playable game. And a very deep game. And with the sound effects and that bit of music, it's very atmospheric as well. And don't forget the player cannot die. The player can save their progress at any point and memorise their current position with the teleporter so this game really is one of those absorbing games which you can get deep into and try to get a little bit further every time. <laughs> Not all of the animals are harmful and later on you'll find a fluffy creature which reminds me of something out of a dizzy game and that thing is almost indestructible and you can use the fluffy to get that whatever it was a key that we found in that pool and you cannot destroy I don't think the sentry gun with a normal grenade and you have to use creatures to squeeze in between gaps and collect things for us just like those radioactive rocks that you can see at the moment.
and we found another teleporter and this teleporter actually takes us back to the main complex and saves us making that journey and also enables us to transport robots here for the job of bringing equipment so you can see a friendly robot or maybe it isn't a friendly robot and at this point we can use the RCD to get through that door or at this point hopefully we can open the door from the inside Pew. The button above our heads toggles the door and when the door is in that colour and in that shape it means we can open it and you can see the teleporter is working as well so as we move through this game we'll activate just a little bit more of it and again just like a dizzy game hopefully this area will be clear of hazards sooner or later but the robots in this game are important for another reason and so that robot had a very special weapon indeed so if I make my way over to where that robot is either by using the teleporter or by some other means you can see this robot here what I'm going to do is actually lure that guy outside and hopefully I can use one of the sentry guns to blow that guy up If at first you don't succeed, use the teleporter. Or let's at least try that again and let's this time collect the key. Thanks to the random elements in Exile, we got that robot blown up actually by some asteroids and we picked up our second gun which is an icer. And the icer is much more powerful than the standard pistol that we start with and if we fire that towards the exit gate to try and blow that up, that will just trigger our arch enemy Triax. Triax cannot be killed, I don't think, so all you can do is to leave him to it and if you get enough blasts on targets he will eventually teleport himself away. That means that we are left with the icer and we can use that to destroy the harder enemies. At times it becomes important to redistribute that power and at the moment I am taking all the power away from the gun and towards the icer and so long as there is some power in the jetpack then that's fine. Certainly don't bother to use the gun once you pick up anything more powerful. Mega version is also the only version where the imps say knee 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 and those imps can be used for certain tasks as well I think and certain long players have different versions of this and different ways to complete this game but I think only the Amiga version has the knee and the different new new versions that the robots make and all the crazy sound effects like that at the moment I'm trying to use a grenade on this guy and that is not going to work so I will just continue by saying the creators of this game, Jeremy C. Smith, is not the same Jeremy C. Smith that created all the communication screens for the Supercars 1 and 2 game. Now that's a different Jeremy C. Smith. And let's not forget that Jeremy H. Smith also created Chuck Rock and was part of Core Design. So it isn't Jeremy Heath Smith either. 
So this is a completely different Jeremy C. Smith, and I think there are at least seven Jeremy Smiths on the Moby Games database. And this Jeremy C. Smith, well, he created Exile originally for the BBC microcomputer, and that was converted to the Acorn Electron in 1988. Unfortunately, Jeremy C. Smith passed away after the release of Exile, and so the Jeremy C. Smith of Thrust fame, unfortunately he created basically those two games. Peter Irvine, on the other hand, co-coded Elite 2 Frontier with David Braben in 1993, and he also co-coded the Elite First Encounters game, which was released in 1995. And he did not co-create Elite 4, unfortunately. He moved on to Darkseid and Darkseid EMP, which was a mobile platform game released in 2003. Just like most open world games, you can be flying around with not much happening if you don't know what to do. But if you do know the right thing to do, then you would know to get the RCD by now and open the second and third doors, of which this is one of those, I think, and you can progress through the rest of the game. And so I hope that this has helped novices understand the principles of this so that you don't get lost completely. And that brings us on to those scores. Ooh. All the AGA scores got between 80 and 89%, which gives this an average rating of 8.5 or 85%. And the OCS version, well, Amiga format originally gives the original game 68%, which is the lowest score. Generation 4 gave this 70%. Amiga Joker gave this 80%. Amiga Force gave Exile 85%. Zero gave it 88 Amiga Power Issue 1 gave it 89%, and the one Amiga gave Exile 90%, and even Amiga Format eventually gave the re-release the same 90%. Even with the current Lemon Amiga score of 7 out of 10, that still means it gets an 8.5 out of 10. And I thoroughly agree that Exile is an amazing game. Thank you once again, and I hope to see you again in another one sometime soon. Thank you.